Right, now, Tizetso, you're asking about unseen poetry. Right, so where is your question? No, I've lost your question. Um, it was somewhere or other, but you said, okay, you asked about tackling an unseen poem. What you said is, how do you tackle the questions so that even though you might not be absolutely sure, you can, in tackling the questions, make sure that you get something towards an answer. So here is the May-June paper of 2019. Right, so look at the question words and the key words. So we've got a what question, an explain what, a discuss how, and a do you agree justify. So the first thing is make sure that you understand what the question is asking you to do. Then go to the keywords. What does the image suggest? Explain what a word, the diction, suggests. Mood. And then you've got water's a spiritual significance. Do you agree? Okay, so what do you notice? The examiners have a tendency to ask you what does it suggest? So the suggest is what is not stated, but that you yourself, oh, stated, that's a D, that you can work out yourself that you can infer, you can draw your own conclusion. So if we just look at this question, if we've got the, the environment is cracking, what does it suggest? So we've got a lack of water, what is it doing to the environment? Then silver suggests about the water. So say to yourself, silver, it's pure, it's beautiful, it's clean, it's got a lovely color. What does it suggest about the water? That it's valuable, that that clean, pure water is essential for life. Then we come to mood. We talked earlier about attitude. The mood is the feeling in the audience or in the viewer or in somebody mentioned specifically. So, how is the mood conveyed in these lines? It's the mood of every man and woman. How are they feeling? Right, now you can see the word frantic and you can see the word hands. So, Titsetsu, don't even worry about the poem for this moment. If we've got frantic hands doing something, what does it suggest? They're panicking, they're desperate. And we've had all these references to water. So let us assume that they are desperate to get the water. Maybe they're dying of dehydration. So what is their mood? Frantic, panicking, desperate. So do you see, yes, obviously I'm not saying don't read the poem. But if you read the poem and then the questions, and you're looking at your keywords and you're looking at your question words, you should be able to work something out. Then in the last one, it's a do you agree question. So it goes to vocab. If you're told that water has spiritual significance, what should I look at? I should look at the diction. Because the diction would tell me whether it is as spiritual significance and justify my response. So look at, at past papers. I thought we had... Oh, no, I don't know. I had another poem somewhere or other. Mbali, where is my other poem? Has it gone vanished, Zulu girl? No, I don't know. I also had the November paper. So, I don't know. Okay, so Tsitsetso, failing this, and Mbali is very silent in my heartbeat. So, let me just look at question words and keywords. So, the first one is what... 
and the question word is impression. Now, do you see, Tsetso, that this examining panel like to ask the question impression and the learner's battle? There was that poem, I don't know if anybody's looked at it, unseen poem about the lions a few years ago. What impressions created of the lions? Remember again with impression, it is not what I am told. It's what I can work out. So if I say, Janet is sitting here staring at the camera. What impression? So maybe you've asked me a question and I'm going, what impression? You mustn't say Janet is just sitting there half smiling with a sort of rigid kind of rigor mortis thing and staring at the camera. That's what you are seeing. What is the impression? She doesn't have an answer. Her brain has seized up. She can't think of anything to say. So she's just kind of, you know, the rabbit in the headlights thing. So that's what they mean by impression. So this one is what impression is created by the heat. And the word in the question was crinkle. So you should know crinkle from, from crinkling up paper or crinkling crisps or something. So again, what impression of the heat? If something crinkles, you know, all the moisture is dragged out of it. So again, I'm not suggesting don't read the poem, but you should be able to work something out. Okay, then you get an explain what. Again, please look at the fact that the questions are repeated. If this is home language or foul, you get the same thing. Explain is own words. Explain what? Then you either get an image or a character or just general diction. So it is vocab. Okay? Right, then we've got this one. Discuss the effectiveness of the image in the context of the poem. So it's one of these questions that I don't like because I much prefer it when the examiners say, discuss the effectiveness in creating the mood, but they haven't. So what are you going to do? So you're going to say, start with the image. What is the image? And then when it's the context of the poem as a whole, can you see any link between the image and the poem? Is it in the mood? Is it in what happens, the events, the story of the poem? Is the image creating a character? Is it dealing with tone? Is it going to message or theme? So you would have to do this for yourself. So let's just go over it again. When you're discussing, you're bringing your own ideas. When you're dealing with effectiveness, does it do what it is meant to do? So you have to work out, so what do I think this image was intended to do? Maybe it's to have an effect on the reader or the audience. So what do I think it was intended to do? And you go to these aspects that I've listed here, which are key features of a literary text. And in going to those key features, you should find something which links that image to the context of the poem. And then finally, the last question in the November paper last year, was comment on, so it's another discuss question, the diction, so this is a diction question, conveys the mood, oh, much better. Now I know what I'm looking for. Now, how do you look at a diction question? First of all, 
do not just say the diction in the last two lines. No, 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 no. And do not choose a long quote with lots and lots and lots of words. Make your answer as short as you can. Let's imagine it's for three marks. So find one word, put it into inverted commas, and say whatever this is suggests. And now you've got to relate it to mood, which is the feeling of the audience. So this word suggests X, which makes the reader feel Y. Tell me what it is. Then do it again for a word or a very short phrase, evokes an idea or accords with, it links with, it supports this, and then relate it to how the reader feels, the mood. But be specific. Do not say, the diction creates a mood of sadness, which is what we find in the rest of the poem. Remember anyway that you have to be careful of happy, sad, and angry. Can you use it in the paper tomorrow? Yes, but make sure those are absolutely the right words, and it shouldn't be another word. So the example I gave you is uh, a character with his fist up, and all the students said he's angry. No, he is defiant. There's a difference. So you need better words. So go back to this question, a diction question. Keep the quote as short as you can, one word or two words. Say it suggests this and then makes the reader as a result feel that. Or it evokes the following response or it accords with the other words in the poem and makes you feel whatever. So, Tizetso, it's no point in doing the un a lot of unseen poems now, but it's quite a good idea just to look at the way the questions are phrased. So I've looked at two, maybe you want to look at 2018 or 2017.